the Almost Aviation Autopilot Plus panel. That's what we're going to look at today. And again, this is a panel you can build for yourself. If you're interested in doing that, stick around to the end of the video and check out the links. It'll tell you how to go about doing that. So what is this? Well, it's a generic general purpose autopilot panel. It contains all the buttons and switches you're going to need to fly pretty much any of the built-in general aviation aircraft in FSX. And I think it's worth making that distinction. If you're interested in flying airliners, your Boeing 747, your Airbus around, it's you know, you've got to be realistic about to what extent this is going to give you full control of those aircraft. Very much more complex systems in there. But any of the general aviation aircraft built into FSX, although they all have different autopilots, there's pretty much a standard core set of functions that most autopilots implement. I based this panel fairly loosely on the Bendix King KFC 225 autopilot which is not quite the one that's in the default FSX aircraft, it's a superset of that. Uh, in fact it's the one that's in the real air scout if you have that aircraft. But it's pretty much the same as the one for example in the default Cessna 172. The main difference is it's got a rotary control for setting the target altitude and it has buttons for nudging the vertical speed up and down. The vertical speed controls missing from the fascia of the default Bendix King autopilot, although you can control the vertical speed during a climb or descent by clicking on the numbers, um, which is pretty much an admission that that's not a complete implementation of the panel in the default aircraft. So anyway, with this panel you can fly Let's see, the default 172, the Baron 58, the King Air 350, the Mooney Bravo, the Mall Orion, I don't know if I've missed any of the general aviation aircraft out, as well as that you can fly many of the payware add-ons that have a similar autopilot, and the ones I've tried are the Relay Scout, the Caronado F33 Bonanza, Caronado Cessna 182. Now that's got a very primitive autopilot in, but it still responds to many of the standard FSX autopilot functions. And, and so on. Even some of the less orthodox autopilots, such as the ones in the older Caronado aircraft, and indeed the one in the BN2 Islander, these will respond to some of the FSX autopilot functions. So what do we have on this panel? Well, we have uh, the core set of autopilot functions that you'll find in most general aviation aircraft. So we've got heading hold, nav hold, approach hold, back course, altitude hold. We can toggle the flight director on and off, which you can do in some of the FSX aircraft independently of the autopilot. So the Mooney, the probably the 208 Caravan, the I can't remember, but uh, but anyway, you got that button. We've got um, up and down buttons for the vertical speed. G generally they're used for the vertical speed when, we, when we're climbing on autopilot to a target altitude. We've got an arm button for the target altitude. Now that's an innovation which you won't find in the, the Bendix King autopilot. Let's say, let's go with the Cessna 172. And I've added that functionality in. So you can set the target altitude and the autopilot won't do anything until you press the arm button. Now that's how it works in the Bendix King KFC 225. I mean I should say that um, the same functions will work differently or will respond slightly differently in different aircraft. So um, that's something to look out for. So, so we have a rotary control to set the target altitude, an arm button to start the climb or descent. Some of the functions that I've included in the way I've marked up this panel that are less orthodox. We've got an indicated airspeed hold, which is not a very common function. I haven't found any of the default aircraft, certainly the general aviation aircraft, that implement that, although it is an FSX core function. I've included it on my panel because I like to fly the Twin Otter Extended and that's got an IAS hold. We've also got a go-around button. Again, you'll find that in some of the default FSX aircraft. It, it's often la labelled TOGA, T-O-G-A. I've got a button that on this panel is labelled vertical speed but actually um, in the templates that I've supplied it's labelled 
LEV LEV and uh, that's because I've supplied another unusual function that's generally not available on the panels explicitly to toggle the wing leveller on and off so you can leave the, the autopilot in control but you can toggle the wing leveller off which allows you to make turns and then toggle it back on again that's very useful in practice those are the only slightly unorthodox functions and what I found is depending on which aircraft you want to fly you probably want to map slightly different things to those um, there's probably, so there's probably three buttons on here that you might think about carefully if you're going to build a panel like this how you want to label them or perhaps leave them unlabeled so I found myself for example not mapping the GA button to go around generally that's the red I've used a red button for that here I've generally found it useful to map that to the nav GPS button that's if you want to switch navigation from the com one sorry from the nav one radio to the GPS the other thing is you might want to use the IAS button in your implementation generally for something else so it could, you could map the wing level to it or the nav GPS button as I've just described so that's pretty much it and in practice you know it makes a huge difference having the autopilot controls to your fingertips without having to touch the keyboard or the mouse if I didn't make that obvious that's the whole purpose of this panel flying it no mouse no keyboard autopilot plus well that suggests I've added value to this and if you look closely you'll see three extra rotary controls which on this panel they're marked up for the nav1 OBS and heading bug controls and the Colesman window for setting the it says barrow on here so that's the barometric pressure again you could map these rotaries to whatever you wanted it just makes sense on the autopilot panel to have them map to the nav1 controls the other extra controls I've got on here are two track IR buttons obviously if you don't have a track IR these are a simple push buttons so I've got pause and center but if you don't have a track IR you, you could use those for something else and engage disengage for the autopilot on there of course and the last one quite important is or quite useful is the seat position and I've got this in this aircraft the seat position up and down but if you push it you've got seat position backwards and forwards as well so I've supplied functions for implementing those although that's a very useful function you're only going to get the most out of that if you use EZCA and that is easy that's the easy dock camera add-on and that's particularly important if you've got a track IR if you have track IR and you don't have easy dock you don't have control over the uh, the eye point or effectively the seat height so you're going to be slightly constrained. You can only use those functions if you pause the track IR. Then you can move the seat up and down temporarily. And when you restart the track IR, it snaps back. I would strongly recommend if you've got a track IR and you don't have EZCA, to get EZCA, even if you only use it for managing... Well, I mean, you can see in the background, one of the things that EZCA does is you can see that cockpit view, that virtual cockpit view. Although the track IR is paused, it's not static, it's bobbing up and down. And that's the motion effects that track that uh, EZCA adds. But um, if you use it for nothing else but gaining control of the eye point, you know, on a button, on a set of buttons or a rotary control, you know, that's worth the price of EZCA in its own right, really. So again, if you want to build a panel like this, the simplest thing you can do is buy my ebook, which is available in the Kindle store, and that'll tell you everything you need to know how to build this from the ground up or if you're not feeling too confident about cutting the acrylics you can buy directly from me a pair of acrylics for giving you a kickstart if you like in building the panel and then you can source everything else yourself um, but again the ebook will explain in great detail how to do all of that how to do the wiring how to do the connecting up to FSX using FSU IPC you will need a registered copy of FSU IPC and the free Linda tool to make full use of this and uh, you can freely download the library of Linda functions that I've produced to help you drive this panel and also you can download freely the templates for creating the graphics so if you want to know more about any of that or if you want to ask any questions get yourself over to the support forum www.almostaviation.com and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have and you find some more pictures and some more details about how to go about building one of these 
so there it is, the Almost Aviation Autopilot Plus panel. Certainly adds a lot to flying your aircraft in FSX, completely mouse and keyboard free. And building one of these should be well within the capabilities of anyone of even a moderately technical disposition.